So while I was reading this, I was thinking to myself, man, I sure would like to have the wit. It would be awesome to be able to talk to my dog. And then I thought, do I really just want to hear him talking about, please, please give me the food off of your plate, please. Hey, what's up, bookworms and those who seek the skill? I am Mike, and we are here today to talk about the 1995 debut novel under the name Robin Hobb. This is, of course, Assassin's Apprentice, book one of the Farseer trilogy. Uh, she had been writing under the name Margaret Lindholm since the 1980s, but Robin Hobb is obviously what most of us know her for now as the first lady of epic fantasy. Now, look, guys, I talked in a Why I Decided to Read Robin Hobb video recently about why it took me so long to read this book and this series. So I'm not going to rehash a lot of that there. Just say it was 24 years in the making for me to finally pick up this book and read it. Now, I was planning to just read the Farseer trilogy and then review it as a whole, but I felt like there was enough for me to talk about with just this first book, a book that I feel like has been much maligned by even Realm of the Oldlings fans. There's enough there for me to talk about in a review. So I probably won't be doing a review for each individual book unless, like I said, Royal Assassin just blows my mind and I got to talk about it. I don't know. But uh, for right now, I'm thinking I'm going to do this book one and then I'm going to just kind of do Farseer, uh, kind of like close it down after I finish Assassin's Quest here in March. But like we always do, guys, let's get into what is it about Assassin's Apprentice? Now, in a faraway land where members of the royal family are named for the virtues they embody, one young boy will become a walking enigma. Born on the wrong side of the sheets, Fitz, son of chivalry farseer, is a royal bastard cast out into the world, friendless and lonely. Only his magical link with animals, the old art known as the wit, gives him solace and companionship. But the wit, if used too often, is a perilous magic and one aboard by the nobility. So when Fitz is finally adopted into the royal household, he must give up his old ways and embrace a new life of weaponry, scribing, and courtly manners, and how to kill a man secretly as he trains to become a royal assassin. So yes, I know that is the same description that I used in my why I decided to read, but guys, it's because I didn't want to spoil myself for the whole realm of the Eldling, so I just had to use the synopsis for the first book. So I apologize if you're a constant watcher and you're like, hey, that's what you used last time. So uh, let's go guys right into what makes it good or bad. And I think the thing that was sold to me the most was her character work. And I am very satisfied to say this falls under the good. Her character work, very, very good. I love the relationships between Fitz and Burrich. Is it Burrich or Burrick? I'm saying Burrich for now, but I'm, I'm open to it. Uh, I don't audio guys, so I don't know these things. Uh, but uh, yeah, yeah, I said Burrich. I started saying Burrick and <laughs> I went back to Burrich. I don't know. You know what? Honestly, by the time I do another one of these, I'll probably be saying Burrick. Who knows? Uh, the relationship between uh, those two and also the relationship between Fitz and and Chade are really, really good stuff. I feel like what Fitz lacks in a true father figure, he gets different versions of a father figure out of those two gentlemen. And, you know, a, a lot of it, you kind of, because you're using the first person point of view, which is something I'm usually not that crazy about. But I, I think there is a touch of unreliable narrator where the whole time Fitz is just kind of acting like, oh, Burrick just, he hates me. He hates me. He can't stand me. Uh, and as if I'm just like, the, the dude cares about you. Yeah, he's probably going about some things wrong, uh, especially like uh, how he handles when he finds out that he is, he does have this power called the wit. He, he probably handles some of those situations wrong, but he definitely cares for him. He feels like it's his duty since uh, since his real daddy just decided to nope out and not take responsibility for his kid. But uh, with Chade, it's a com completely different. You know, he starts off as, you know, I'm just going to be your teacher. You're going to be my pupil and you will obey. And over time, you know, it's just Fitz becomes so attached to him and Chade's still kind of like, you know, holding him at a distance. But you could tell that he really, really cares for Fitz quite a bit. So right there, you've got those... Uh, those two father figures, like I said, giving him kind of what he has been lacking. 
And it, I think it's a really good journey as far as one book goes because you think of a lot of times when you're someone who like that, you spend a lot of time with a mentor, that figure is going to become very important to your life. So I like the development between those two and, of course, the resolution of what happens with Fitz and Burick, Burick at the end of this story. But, uh, yeah, this, the character work was... was um, really sold to me as like her her forte and you know i love that i am a very big character first guy and all these things so uh, i what, what i feel like maybe this book lacked a little bit in world building because we just kind of scraped the surface of these six duchies here but um i feel like definitely the character work was very very good and that is up to and including animal companions i mean this is something that any fantasy fan is always going to love right you i mean i, I think when i first got into a song of ice and fire in the early 2000s i loved the relationship between john snow and ghost i mean that was just like the thing so uh fitz has this relationship with uh smithy and nosy these two basset hounds and it's just it's really really just heartwarming stuff and it turns into heart-wrenching stuff you know uh so i, I feel like that's kind of a cheat code <laughs> when you're using uh when you're using dogs you know because uh, most people People are dog lovers, right? So uh, I'm not going to consider that definitely a bad. It's very, very much a good getting to uh, the, you see the, the actual relationship where he kind of feels like these dogs are his only friends at time. You know, I mean, you know, he meets Molly and the other uh, street urchins, I guess you'd call them. And, you know, but he's basically taken to the palace and it's like he doesn't get to see those human counterparts anymore. So he really bonds with these animals and this ability that he has really helps kind of push that along. And it's uh, it's done very well. It's done extremely, extremely well. And uh, I like the way that... Um, the assassin training kind of evolves slowly. You know, this is not one of those cases. This isn't. Uh, this isn't Brent Weeks. Sorry to keep picking on Brent Weeks, but this isn't the. Uh, 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 what is his book called? The The Night Angel. Okay, we've done like one training session. Now you're a master assassin. Nothing like that. It's a slow, slow dis uh, ascent into getting good at what he is. And I, I like that she writes fits in a way to where. Uh, there is no Mary Sue, Gary Stu thing here. Yes, he's talented and he's good at a lot of these things. And he will buckle down and he will focus and he'll become really good. You know, just like anyone, practice makes perfect, right? Uh, but uh, he messes up a lot. I mean, Fitz messes up a lot in this book. Now I kind of want to talk about some of the villains here because... Uh, it's, it's, it's going to good. I'm going to put these under good, but they're not perfect. But I'm going to talk about why. I feel like they're kind of over the top in a way. They have the reasons for being evil. They're not just like mustache twirling. Mwah, ha, 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 I'm a bad guy. Yeah, it's not like that. They do kind of get over the top sometime. Galen uh, would probably be one of my most hated characters in fantasy if it were not for Lord Regal who I think is one of the most rage-inducing villains that I've encountered in quite a while. Just a pompous little ass that you just want to punch the page every time he's on there. Um, yeah, like I said, it, it's a little bit over the top, maybe a little bit of uh, tropey, fantasy, bad guy, I, I think a little bit. But again, he has a motive, and you understand it. Same with Galen. You understand why they have the stance they do. It's not just, hey, I'm just a bad guy. Uh, they have reasons for being like that. Uh, but uh, I think, <laughs> again, I'd absolutely hate Galen if it wasn't for Regal. I think he kind of uh, he kind of jumped on the grenade for him in that one. Uh, I, something I kind of forgot to talk about here, and I feel like it's an elephant in the room. It needs to be addressed. Is every time I would talk about Brandon Sanders, I talk about oh, I love the way that he writes these female characters. So of course I need to address this. I love the way that Robin Hobb writes male characters. Yes, I, I never. I wasn't even thinking this, guys. You know, that's how good it was. I was never thinking, oh, wow, this, this lady is really writing uh, a coming-of-age boy really, really well. That means she did it awesome. Uh, it's very, very believable. I am a sucker for a coming-of-age story. Anyone who's followed my Stephen King stuff knows this. She does it wonderfully here. Uh, I mean, this goes from the time he's, uh, what, like, I think six to a teenager. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's a quick evolution through one book. I, I know that this series is going to go through fits for a long part of his life. But as far as this, I, I didn't expect him to get to the teenage years, I think, in this first book. But, you know, what she did do, very good. And, and, and just that, that sense of solitude, it feels like, that Fitz feels like he's growing up with. Like I said, where animals are kind of his only friend. So, so when he does 
keep running into Molly once in a while. It's like, oh, yes, he's running into a, 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 a actual another person to communicate with, you know. So it makes those those visits between those two really, really well. And it handles, you know, uh, the adolescence of the, the coming-of-age boy so well. So kudos to her. Like I said, I didn't want to uh, skip around that because it's only fair that this is going to have to come up. How is Robin Hobb writing her male characters? And very, very good so far. Um, there's a scene with Lady Patience and Fitz in this that is so emotionally powerful, I almost rolled a tear. It was so good. It was so... I, I, I just can't use another word besides powerful. It was just... I reread the passage like three times. It was so good. And I think it's because I was just set up to absolutely hate this character for obvious reasons that you'll see when you read it. And I didn't. Uh, I actually just... I fell in love with her. I thought she was great and I just I, my heart broke for this woman uh, more than once in this book and it's just if you can get me that good <laughs> in the first couple hundred pages of an epic fantasy series you're doing something right with your characters and that one was just done exquisitely so props to her Fitz and Lady Patience uh, I want more of that now there are a couple of bad things I feel like you got to talk about whenever you put on the review goggles here I, I'm not really down with the whole virtuous naming thing yet yet uh, I, I feel like it's just a gimmick at this point and I mean it's like uh, I find nothing regal about Lord Regal whatsoever. So, you know, uh, obviously, you know, they can't be self-fulfilling prophecies. I don't think, I'm not really sure if I understand exactly how that works, but uh, it, it kind of keeps, I don't know, it kind of keeps it like a, almost like a fairy tale. So I kind of get that part, you know, like Prince Charming or something like that. But uh, I, I don't know. I don't know. That's something that'll probably grow on me over time. But there were a couple of times I've been like, wait, who... Verity, yeah, I was just kind of going through all the virtues, like who is who now. And plus, my wife's name is Patience, so I get to say, "Hey, Lady Patience," you know. Um, Fitz, uh, his true father, just kind of noping out so early in the series. I, I want to be like, "Well, we might see him later." I, I don't know. I don't know. But just, I, I guess I just wasn't a fan of that. I was, I was kind of hoping for that confrontation, you know, and that inevitable heartbreak. Uh, of, uh, hey, my real dad wants nothing to do with me kind of thing, you know, but uh, I guess I kind of felt like I was robbed of that a little bit. Uh, I think so much time is spent talking about the Forged and these whole uh, Red Raiders, and it just, like, it never gets any real re resolution. Now, I know this is a book one of a trilogy. I believe it was planned to be a trilogy from Go. So, okay, she planted those seeds, and we're gonna get more back to it later. I guess I was just kind of Expecting this to kind of be a little more closed-ended, uh, so that's one that probably will I would I will you know slash out of the bad once I finish a trilogy and see that it has a, a satisfying conclusion. I'm guessing that it does. Uh, I don't think that they're going away anytime soon, but it just seemed like an awful lot of time spent on it to have like zero resolution whatsoever on them. And this is just one because I hate it when a, a villain doesn't get their comeuppance. Uh, I feel like the villains in this. Don't do it again. You know, I don't feel like they get any real retribution for what they were trying to do. They were trying, I mean, basically treason what they were doing in this book. And it's just been like, okay, now don't do it again. I'm, I'm sending you to your room for time out for 10 minutes and uh, don't let it happen again. I say, like, that's not going to cause problems down the road. So uh, I, I don't know if that uh, is just like a, a storytelling technique I didn't care for or what. And, and again, I think it's because maybe, uh, like I said, they've got a bigger part to play. It just seemed kind of unrealistic to, hey, what was going on here? Uh, these people should have been hanged for what they probably did. But um, I don't, I don't want to get too, too into details there for you. I wish we'd kind of gotten a better explanation of the skill. Uh, more than two-thirds of this book, I'm like, is the wit and the skill the same thing or not? I wasn't even sure. Now, I don't know if I was a dummy and I just missed that or not. I didn't feel like it was really explaining what the skill was to me very well. So uh, if you are real tedious about your magic systems and you need everything kind of completely scientifically drawn out, that might be a negative for you. Uh, it's kind of a wait and see for me. You kind of get, you kind of figure it out by the end of this, but I still feel like there's much more that's yet to be explained. This isn't like the war ends or nothing in, in Malazan where it's like, what? It's just more of a, I wish it had been clearer on exactly what this is. So I think I'm pretty clear on the wit at this point, but the skill, still got some questions. And that brings me into why you guys should read it. Look, it's a really nice writing style. I don't think there was a ton of fluff in there. I flew through this in three days. Very easy to read. I never felt any kind of slogginess or slowing down or anything like that. And as far as like the training books go, this one's relatively painless. You know, uh, I think um, 
Maybe Rage of Dragons by Evan Winter was the last one I read where the training sequences were overly abundant, but they never really felt like a drag to the book. I, I think this one does it pretty well. I like all the lessons with him and Shade. I think that they're really good. They're quality. They build the character. They build exactly what it is an assassin is doing. I'm fine, like I said, that he isn't, Fitz isn't like this crazy master assassin by the end of the first book. Uh, maybe by the end of book three, he'll be there. I don't know. We shall see. But I, I like that he's still kind of torn on what he should do on some of these things. So that's definitely something I think that uh, if you're worried that, uh, oh, this is just going to be a training montage book, uh, I'm not interested. It's done in a believable way. And I think if, like, if you like something like, you remember the Dark Knight where uh, Bruce is training with Ra's al Ghul? I think if you like that, you'll probably like this. Uh, I feel like it's, it's, it's good enough. Uh, exciting and interesting method that it, it will it will kind of breeze along pretty quickly. And again, guys, if you like a coming of age story, this is going to be for you. Uh, I love the coming of age story. Putting it in a fantastical setting, awesome. Add some animal companions, excellent. I, I'm down with that. Uh, if I have some final thoughts here, I, I gotta say a lot of the negative reviews on it I've heard is, well, nothing happens in that book. Um, I gotta disagree. I think plenty happened in this book because when you talk about the coming of age story, and I get this a lot with people who tell me they don't like Stephen King for this reason. Oh, well, nothing happened. Think back to your childhood. Looking at it now, you know, like, hey, it's pretty uneventful. But you have a lot of memories from that time, right? That's what a coming of age story is, is everything you have to learn along the way to adulthood. And I think that... Um, uh, this is just one book, but she's one of the better ones I've seen doing it in the fantasy setting, for sure. Uh, the character growing from uh, you know six years old to a preteen. I think that that uh, she did it really, really well. Not not quite on a level of a Stephen King, but I have a little bit of bias there. I mean, <laughs> right there. there's a little bit of bias there. But uh, again, if I'm mentioning her in the name of my favorite author ever, obviously uh, that, that was a pretty good first impression. And uh, yeah, if her character work continues to be... Uh, as good as, as in book one and it gets even better because everybody tells him book two and three are so much better. Like, I can't wait to see what happens. And I mean, I, because of how much I enjoyed this and because of uh, uh, my accelerated reading schedule due to uh, circumstances, I, I, I went ahead and moved book two and three up. I had book two in March and I had book three in May and I moved them up to February and March now. And so if uh, I continue to enjoy these as much as I enjoy this first book, I definitely think that um, I'm going to be hitting live ships sometime this year. So those who are worried, uh, I wasn't going to like Robin Hobb. I don't. I think you can put those fears to rest, obviously. She has a lot of the things I like. Good character work, coming of age. I love these things. Animal companions. I'm easy to please in those regards. But uh, yeah, I had a great time with this book. Uh, it's, if it wasn't for Revival, this would have been the best book that I read in January. Uh, Revival was just so good. Uh, but uh, again, Again, awesome. Just an awesome start. And I, I, I can't wait to learn more. And I can't wait to hopefully see these villains get what they deserve. <laughs> and I can't wait to see uh, the apparent star of this series, which apparently I will be introduced to in book number two. Now, this is Ghost, but you know what I'm referencing if you know. If you know, you know, right? The apparent star of the series does debut in the next book, and I can't wait to meet said character. So, guys, have you read Assassin's Apprentice? What did you think? Well, let me know below. Please keep it no spoilers for those who are just now enjoying this series. Uh, when I wrap up Farseer, I'll make that uh, some spoiler section for you guys to talk about. But, uh, yeah, please let me know what you guys think about this, because, again, if this is the worst book in her series... I can't wait to see what's next.